Morning, glory, America. Bonjour, hi, Canada. Greetings to everyone listening. I am joined by Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, who declared his candidacy for the presidency a couple of weeks ago. Good morning, Mayor. Welcome to the Hugh Hewitt Show. Good morning, Hugh. It's wonderful to be with you. I want to start by giving you an opportunity to tell the audience, and there are 475 different places that people are listening, who you are and why you're running. Well, I'm the son of two Cuban exiles, uh, Xavier and Rita, who came to this country at 12 and 7 because a leader in their country uh, tried to convince its people, give me all your property, give me all your businesses, and don't worry, we'll make everybody equal. And they did. He made everybody equally poor and equally miserable. And so my parents came to this country, uh, like many others, uh, seeking uh, opportunity. And I'm the oldest of their four children. Uh, I was born in this country, raised in this country, educated in this country. Uh, I'm the first Miami-born mayor, and I was also the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Uh, And I'm running for president because I fundamentally believe in this country, uh, in the opportunities that it's given me, and frankly, I feel a sense of obligation to be part of the conversation for a variety of reasons. The first is I think much of our conversation, political conversation right now, is toxic. Uh, and, and not serving our country's best interest. Uh, I believe that I had uniquely qualified to be the president to tackle some of the big issues of our country, which I'm sure we're going to discuss. Uh, we- and I believe that I'm someone who has a unique ability to grow the party in a way that, not, that will not only win the 2024 presidential election, but could win a generation of elections. Now, Mayor, this audience divides roughly by thirds, a third into only Trump, a third into never Trump, and a third in, I just want to win. What do you say to the only Trump people? Why are you running when he's 30 points ahead? I would say to the only Trump people that I understand your frustration. I understand your anger. I understand the fact that the sort of mainstream media and, and the elites have completely ignored a, a large segment of our country. And I want to take that energy and I want to channel it into a positive vision for our, the future of our country. Um, uh, You know, for me, uh, what I'm focused on is creating generational prosperity. It's what I've done in my city. We're number one in the nation in wage growth. We're number one in tech job growth. We have the lowest unemployment in America. And that uh, produces other positive factors, like we have the lowest homicide rate last year per capita since 1964. This year, we're 40% below that number. And we've reduced homelessness in our city by 90%. We want to be the first major urban city to get to zero. Those are important issues because those are the everyday issues that affect Americans living uh, across the cities of our country. 85% of the population of America lives in American towns and cities. 91% of the GDP produced by our country is produced by people who live in American towns and cities. And so for me, uh, what I would tell them is you're going to find someone who's energetic, who has uh, a a positive, uh, embracing and unifying vision for this country that's going to create the maximum amount of prosperity and who has the experience to position our country in a way to take advantage of what I consider to be a tsunami of opportunities in, in the uh, future economy, which is digital knowledge, knowledge based. But the only Trump people want to know why not just get out of the way and let Donald Trump get renominated? You know, I think I offer something different. Uh, you know, Donald Trump lost young voters to Joe Biden, which is pretty crazy. Um, voters under 30 by 26 points. Um, you know, our cities are have gone completely blue. When I when I became mayor of Miami uh, the year before 2016, the president lost uh, to Hillary Clinton, Dade County by 30 points. Uh, I've been uh, reelected since then by 80 percent. I was re- elected by 85 percent. And in the midterm last year, we won Dade County Republicans by 10 points. So that's a 40 point swing. So I have the ability to change. Uh, and, and, and create new voters uh, from cities. And then being the first Hispanic Republican president in the history of the country allows me to also uh, grow the party of, with Hispanics, which uh, is 20% of the country. If we want to win presidential elections, not by 40,000 votes or 70,000 votes, but by, by large margins for a long period of time, um, we need someone who can uh, communicate a vision uh, that, that is representative of, of the best aspirations of this country. Now, the never Trump people want to know what you think of, A, his temperament generally, and then B, 
the indictment he is already facing in Manhattan, the indictment in Miami, and the probable future indictment in Georgia and another one in D.C. over January 6th. So a general and then four specifics. Um, will you denounce his, his temperament? And what do you think about the four indictments? Well, I think I'm the only candidate running who didn't vote for him in 2016 and 2020. I wrote in a Republican in 2016, Marco Rubio, and I wrote in Mike Pence in 2020. I'm not sure that any other uh, Republican candidate can can say that. So I have sort of the credentials, if you will, uh, in that in that regard. Um, I, I think his policies were, by and large, very good for the country. I think his personality, um, you know, as, as someone who was born in 1977 and grew up, uh, you know, uh, in the Reagan years, and, 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 and you know, admirant of Ronald Reagan, I, I gave my launch speech at the Reagan Library in the final installment of the Time to Choose a series of, of speeches. Um, you know, who you know, Reagan was a president who not only was a great communicator and someone that we could admire, but he always focused on what he was for instead of what he was against, which I think is another differentiator as well. Um, in terms of his indictments, you know, I think they're serious. I mean, obviously, he's innocent until proven guilty, as everyone is in this country. Uh, and I think he needs to take them seriously because, you know, they're, they're, they're serious charges. Um, you know, there is a perception uh, among uh, those who, who are Republicans, and, and you see that in, in the polling where his numbers actually go up with each successive indictment where there is a sense that there is a distrust of, of not only the media, but of our justice system. And I think that's something that, as president, I'm going to work hard uh, to try to uh, recreate and, and, and to reinstill, because I think that's a fundamental pillar of our democracy. And I don't think our democracy can work and can be healthy if we don't have confidence in our justice system, if we don't have confidence in our press. Now, Mayor, this uh, show tilts heavy on the national security issue. So first question, if you are president, and Xi Jinping and the CCP launch a cross-strait invasion of Taiwan, would you order our submarines to sink those ships? Yes. All right. Um, uh, yeah, in terms of the, the answer is, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to move to the nuclear triad now. Sure, and go ahead. How do you weight the nuclear triad? What is the most important aspect of it? What would you fund first and, re, and modernize first? Yeah, uh, you know, obviously that's the ability to deploy nuclear weapons from sea, air, and land. Um, you know, there. Uh, when you think about technology and how we're deploying our assets and our strategies, uh, there's a tremendous amount of disruption right now from drones to AI and uh, how we strategize and make decisions. Um, obviously, um, having ballistic submarines uh, is is uh, is incredibly important because they're also nuclear powered as our our uh, aircraft carriers. Uh, and so they can go on and on and on. Um, China's, I think, building a nuclear carrier, uh, you know, aircraft carrier at, a, at an alarming rate um, and trying to um, you know, overtake us in terms of, of their Navy. So that is a massive uh, concern. And I think one of the things that distinguished us uh, as a country and, and, you know, obviously one of the faults for, for the Soviet Union was SDI, you know, our ability to have a strategic defense initiative and system, they call it Star Wars. Right, the ability to shoot out um, nuclear weapons in the sky. So I think you know it's not just about our offensive capabilities. I think it has to be it has to do with our defensive capabilities. I would like to have a fourth year instead of a, a triad. We should have uh, the ability to launch from space. I mean, there, there's a massive amount of investment in space. I think you have a thousand companies that are investing in space. It's become a private a theater for private investment. Back when I was younger, space was dominated by the governments. Now it's dominated by the private sector. And I think uh, we have to look at the ability to, to deploy from space uh, and to also have de defensive capabilities with lasers and a variety of other technologies um, that will give us, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of encouraging uh, signs that we see with Israel's missile defense system, um, with Ukraine's use of the Patriots, Saudi's use of the Patriots, um, you know, against Yemen uh, and Iran uh, through Hezbollah. I mean, there's, 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 there's a lot of good there, but I think there, we have to continue to invest and, and be the technological winner of our defense systems and our offensive capabilities. When we come back from break, we'll continue talking national security with Miami Mayor Francis Suarez. He is running. What's your website, Mayor? Thank you, Hugh. It's www.francissuarez.com. And I would just ask anyone who wants to hear more of me, give me a dollar. I want to get on the debate stage on August 23rd. Every single uh, state.
state that I visited in this country, the more they get to know me, the more they like me, and the more they want to know more. And I think uh, the, the truth, the same cannot be said for all the other candidates in my, in my field. Talking to Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, who is running for president. Mr. Mayor, a couple more questions on national security. Sure. What did you make of, of Secretary Blinken's trip to China last week? I think it was disgraceful. Uh, I think, uh, you know, what uh, our country is doing under the current president is projecting weakness, uh, beginning with the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, which I think uh, is part of the impetus for Putin making his calculation to invade Ukraine. I think if you are uh, Xi Jinping or Vladimir Putin and you're getting older and you, you know, you have opportunities or windows to to fulfill your territorial ambitions, it doesn't get any better than having a president like Joe Biden. I think, um, you know, Blinken and, and, and the administration is Obama's B team, um, and they're intellectuals and academics who have very little, if any, practical understanding of the real world. I can tell you that they have no uh, coherent strategy for our own hemisphere, which is going increasingly socialist uh, and left, uh, you know, when you consider the fact that the traditional leftist regimes were Cuba, Venezuela, and, and Nicaragua, now you have a leftist government in Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, uh, Peru, Bolivia. Um, it, you, you know, that creates a tremendous amount of poverty in our region uh, and creates more immigration pressure on the U.S. Um, we have no coherent strategy to deal with that. We need to depower China. Uh, of the trillion dollars uh, of annual wealth that we give them in the form of our trade deficit and the stealing of our IP. Um, and we need to use that to reinforce our allies in our region um, and, of course, our own economy uh, and our supply chain, which was exposed as extremely vulnerable during COVID and, and, and basically bottled up by an you know, increasingly hostile adversary in China. Penultimate question, Mayor. Will you be talking about the Uyghurs in your campaign? What, the what? The Uyghurs. What's a Uyghur? Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, let me, you won't be. You okay. got to get smart on that. Let me talk to you a little okay. bit about the uh, the last question, which is, if you have a chance to craft American immigration policy for between the ten and twenty million people who are in the country without permission, what would uh, Francis Suarez's uh, policy be? Well, I, I think it starts with securing the border. Obviously, um, we have six to seven uh, illegal undocumented that have come in uh, since uh, uh, Biden's catch and wave policy, or wave and release, really more than catch and release uh, policy, and, and the lifting of Title Forty Two. Um, you know, you have eighty to ninety thousand people dying of fentanyl overdoses in our country being pumped in by China through the southern border. That's the equivalent of a seven forty seven crashing every single day. We saw the national tragedy. Uh, of the loss of, of, of five uh, Americans in a submersible. Imagine what we would be thinking if a 747 crashed every day. We would dedicate all the resources necessary uh, to secure our border. Uh, we're not doing that. Um, I would depower China, as I just said, and use the resources to reinforce our hemisphere. So so would you regularize people who are in the country illegally if they've kept the law? Not give them amnesty, I, not I, make I, them I, citizens, I, I, but let I, them I stay? Think, I, think, I think as a Hispanic Republican president, I would be in a unique position to solve that quagmire, right? And I think, uh, you know, what you would do, uh, first of all, is you would sort of de-boogeyman the issue because you're a Republican Hispanic president. I think Democrats have, uh, you know, not communicated adequately with, with, uh, uh, with Hispanics by calling them Latinx and then saying that they're as unique as San Antonio tacos. I think that's a huge opening for Republicans. And I do think from a national security perspective, I do think, uh, you know, from the perspective of, of, of understanding that we have no mechanism to deport the you know, 15 or 20 million or so undocumented that are here, I do think you need to give them some sort of status. And I think as a Hispanic Republican president, I would be in a unique position to negotiate that with Congress. Okay, last chance. Uh, what's the website again, Mayor Suarez? The, the website is www.francissuarez.com, and you gave me homework, uh, Hugh. I'll, I'll look at what uh, was it. What did you call it? A Weeble? The <laughs> Uyghurs. You really I'll need to know about the Uyghurs, Mayor. You got to talk about it every day. I will, okay. I will. I will talk about. I will. Forward, I will search Uyghurs. I'm. I'm a good learner. I'm a fast learner. All right. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Keep coming back. I appreciate the time this morning. Have a good one. Back with you, Hugh. Thank you. Bye bye.